Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and a continuing series, The PlayStation 2 Palace, where I take a look at some of my favorite PlayStation 2 games of all time and talk about some of the deeper cuts on the system. This is a series on some of the games that I love that aren't going to show up on top 10 of all time PlayStation 2 lists. Obviously, if you can't tell already, we're doing Initial D Special Stage, which is a full home console port of Stage 2 on the Naomi 2. It's a Sega to PlayStation 2 port and it's absolutely spectacular. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor down below, hit like and subscribe, that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But without further ado, let's get right into the race, and I will say right off the top that Initial D is one of my favorite arcade racing franchises of all time, and bringing it from the Naomi to the PlayStation 2 was an absolutely outstanding port of this game. Now for most of the games on this series, I'm using PCSX2 because I do like my PlayStation 2 in higher internal resolutions with enhancements. I think it takes games that are definitely retro and gives them a much more modern feel. And you will see there that I went right into the wall in third person mode. And that is because this is the type of game that 100% needs to be played in the cockpit view to fully understand the courses, how you drift in and out of corners, and get a better sense of how it actually plays. Now that's not as exciting on the capture front because you're not seeing the car whipping around the corners. But trust me, if you want to get into Initial D, you 100% want to learn how to play the game from first person mode. Not only does it become easier and more effective to drift around the corners, the sensation of speed and everything that Initial D offers is going to be amplified and much better in that first person mode. And I'm not even cutting to different shots because this game is so exciting. It's giving me everything I need as an editor right off the top. But it's just an amazing game and it is so good on PlayStation 2. The entire Initial D series has always been spectacular, but I do love the Naomi Originals because this is where the franchise got its start. And you'll see here as we're starting to come down through the mountain, hitting these switchbacks, drifting in and out like this turn right here. If you do it just right and you whip the ass end of that car around at the perfect timing, it feels like magic. This game gives you a sensation of accomplishment, speed, and handling of the vehicle that I don't think many other series do as well as Initial D. And obviously Sega being an arcade racing developer, they're always going to be at the forefront of doing something like this. But moving on much later into the game, this is the key hook of Initial D. It is just you against one other car and it is a battle to get to the finish line first. And when you're doing this bump and run gameplay, you have a car in front of you and you're trying to find a passing opportunity on these narrow Japanese roads. It is just intense. Any one mistake, any one bump like right there, they close my passing lane off and I have to drop back. But that's why it's so much fun. I now have to figure out how to get around this vehicle. I need to decide when to hit the brakes, when to hit the gas, and when to try to drift around them. If you do it well, you squeak through in a little tiny passage and you can take the win. If you screw it up, you're going to end up having to do the entire course over again because if you can't beat your opponent, you don't move on. And you'll see there that I hit the car in the wrong corner, bounced into the guardrail, and now they have completely taken off. This is the type of game that punishes mistakes, but it doesn't force mistakes. If you're racing well, you get around your opponent, it's because you did an amazing job. If you hit the guardrail, it's because you didn't read the racing line correctly. This is not the type of game where you can blame it on the CPU being cheap or the mechanics and handling not being sound. It is 100% you. But that's why a game like this is so incredible because it gives you that potential to learn and master everything so your improvements really do feel like your own. And you'll see here going back to a daytime course again, it's just such a great feeling when you're whipping around corners, when you're drifting that vehicle, when you're just coming close to hitting the wall but you just miss it by the biggest fraction it is a sensation that no other racing game I feel like outside of OutRun 2 or OutRun SP brings. And of course, those are both by Sega as well. So no surprise, they have what it takes to give that to you. Now, I'm going to let you try to listen to some of the soundtrack, but I'm assuming it's going to throw up a copyright flag and you're probably going to hear me come back and talk a little bit more because all of these songs are licensed. But let's see if we get lucky this time. So go ahead and listen to the soundtrack for like 45 seconds or so, and I'll either be right back to tell you more about the game or I'll be right back a lot quicker. But enjoy! What was that? I always like 
で盛り上がれないよ<音声>なんか変な気がするなエンジン So you either got to hear some nice soundtrack with some amazing engine noises or you had to hear me fill 45 seconds of dead air because I had to remove the music from the video and that's the hard part is that all the music in this game is incredible but it is also licensed but you'll see here when we do finish a race after you get so many tuning points by winning your car is going to get different options and you're going to be advancing your car's performance the entire time so sometimes you can go back and recompete in a race to get more points so you can scale that level up so you are more competitive later on in the game. I'm not going to say it's like RPG elements, but it has some of that same grinding mechanic of a good JRPG, but it's always balanced. You might need to do one more race that you already beat to get that next upgrade, but it's just going to be that one. But as we go into this next race here in first person mode in the dark with that rear view mirror, I just love it. You can see your opponent, you see where they are, and the entire time you're playing this game, it is nothing but straight pressure. You feel the pressure to have a clean racing line when you're in the lead, and when you end up in second place, you feel the pressure to perform even better to try to get back in front of your opponent. Each race is long too, it's like two or three minutes depending on the course, and I love that length. All of these switchbacks, all of these turns, sometimes you'll get the course in daytime, sometimes you'll get it in night, but you'll see here as we come around that corner, I just ever so slightly kiss the guardrail. Now if we go back to the same corner in third person mode, you'll see I do it again. I need to learn that corner better so that I can have a better race, because on the harder difficulties, a single touch like that is going to be the difference between winning and losing a match. And that is why I love this game so much. It is the risk versus reward. Sliding into a corner, deciding when to use the brakes, deciding when to just release the gas and flick the analog stick or the steering wheel to get that drift initialized. It is just pure muscle memory. And when you're playing this game well, I don't think there's another game that has the same amazing sensation of speed and just overall excitement than Initial D. Now, of course, this is just an arcade port of Initial D Stage 2. They are already past Stage 8 at this point in time. So if you get into the series, there are so many different Initial D games you can play. But the port on PlayStation 2, in my opinion, is one of my absolute favorites. And you can't say that this game doesn't look spectacular, especially upscaled internally on PCSX2. All of the mountains, all of the trees... This plays it real close to real life. You have real licensed vehicles. You have real roads in Japan. This is not an arcade racing game visually. It is an arcade racing game mechanically, but I do like that they marry those two things together. That concrete arcade physics and handling system that Sega is so well known for with a very realistic muted color palette. We've got a blue car on asphalt, and we've got some green trees and mountains, and every once in a while a sign promoting a real world brand. But otherwise, what is here is so simple in the visual presentation, but it looks so good here on PCSX2. I just absolutely love it. And as we transition to a nighttime course, I love the real-time lighting effects of the headlights and how they turn as the car turns. It gives you just enough to see, and all those little reflectors on the guardrails really open up and allow you to see what's going on. But I'm going to try to give you one more taste of the soundtrack because it's so good I want to let you listen to it twice or you're going to listen to it zero times because it got flagged as well. But this time give yourself 30 seconds to soak in the engine noises and sound of Initial D and I'll be right back. The game has such a great soundtrack, I do hope you could listen to that, but if you couldn't, go ahead and look up the initial D Stage 2 soundtrack from the arcades and you'll get a chance to hear some of the amazing music. I also love we get all these ridiculous hand-drawn cutscenes in between races, giving you a little bit of story, but I am playing the Japanese version, so it's kanji and we don't know what the story means. 
but I do not know anything about Initial D outside of the video games. I know nothing about any animated series or mangas, and I'm sure they're incredible, but for me it is just straight racing action and that instant straight bumping into the wall action. But if you've never played an Initial D game before, this is as good a place as any to start, and if you have a CRT TV at your house and you got a PlayStation 2 like I do, it does look incredible on CRT. But if you want to play it on a modern display, PCSX would probably be my preferred way to do it because it looks absolutely outstanding. The frame rate is perfect, the graphics upscale well, and the base game is some of the best arcade racing Sega has ever done. Arcade racing games are one of my favorite genres of all time, and Sega is 100% my favorite developer of arcade racing games. And what they've done here on the PlayStation 2 is nothing short of a 10 out of 10 spectacular experience. Weaving around these corners, drifting in and out, taking those turns left and right. When you get good at this game, when you're performing well, when you're winning races, you just keep saying to yourself, I'm going to play one more. And then suddenly one more turns into, you've been sitting in front of the television for three hours playing Initial D, and you didn't even realize that time went by. That's how good a game like this is. It steals your time, and you are happy to have been stolen from. But short of that, leave me a comment down below. Tell me, do you play Initial D games? Have you played this on PlayStation 2? Or what is your preferred game in the Initial D series? Because there are so many of them. I'm sure I'm going to hear a lot of comments about who's liking what. And tell me, what is your favorite all-time racing game on PlayStation 2? Short of that, we're done. Bye-bye.